There is a place that for 400 odd years has been celebrating the life of the mind. A place that has produced scholars, poets, politicians, dreamers, scientists, humanists. A place that has touched every corner of the world and beyond. A place that knew its direction 400 years ago and still does to this day. That place is the University of Edinburgh, attracting the best talent from around the globe, addressing the key issues that challenge our world. But what gives it its particular character? Its unique DNA. The University of Edinburgh is one of the great comprehensive universities of the world. It's disparate because it's spread throughout the city, um, as are the students, so it actually becomes part of the fabric of the city. It's so outward looking and it, it always has been. I think the chief character is to encourage its students to take part in the intellectual trace. It's engaged in creating knowledge, transmitting knowledge and curating it. Edinburgh has a very strong literary heritage. You know, you arrive in Edinburgh at Waverley Station, named after a novel, and when you walk out, you see the Scott Monument, named after an author. It's a nice irony that the academic study of English literature is largely a Scottish invention. It was entirely natural for Edinburgh to become the first UNESCO city of literature. The university was founded at the end of the 16th century and it really started developing dramatically in the 18th century. And there were really two very important things. One was teaching medicine and doing research on medicine in a very empirical way and the other was being at the heart of the Scottish Enlightenment. There's some extraordinary parallels between the 18th century and now. Uh, like then, we're in a period of great change and the university is responding to those changes by restructuring the way in which it organises its teaching and its learning and using that to attract the best people from around the world to come and talk across boundaries, as they did then. These opportunities generate an extraordinary feeling of freedom and excitement. <laughs> Part of being a great comprehensive university involves creating absolutely new areas. Brace yourself. Here comes the science bit. Informatics is computer science on steroids. It brings together traditional computer science with newer areas like artificial intelligence and cognitive science where we study how people carry out complex tasks. What we're finding is we are exquisitely sensitive to where other people are looking in a visual scene. So we are actually adept at reading each other's minds. Machines can't do that yet. Most people believe that when you try to put fire safety engineering into practice, what you're going to do is increase cost. But what we're trying to do here is actually make people understand that really, uh, if you design a building properly, it's going to be a lot more cost effective and at the end of the, of the day, it's going to be a much safer building. So this particular experiment shows what we call flashover. And flashover basically is the evolution between a harmless little fire like the one you see there and a fire that is actually going to engulf the whole room. The whole idea of fire grid is to put everything together in such a way so they can understand ahead of the event what's going to happen. And they cannot face a situation like what happened in the World Trade Center where the building fell on top of more than 2,000 people. It's just literally trying to make people's lives safer, actually safe lives. Jennifer, I am studying business in French. Five words to sum me up. God, music, photography, people, and basketball. The troops' blessings in my life are undoubtedly my friends. They're funny, they're intelligent, and I think that's what makes Edinburgh such a wonderful place. I'll also walk away with 
unforgettable memories. Your flatmate banging on the door at three in the morning because she's had a bit too much to drink and she's lost her keys. Silly, funny things like that that you just remember for the rest of your life. The idea is we're building up a database of lots of different abnormal cat heart sounds. Yes, this is Bud. He has um, what's called an intermittent gallop rhythm. The Dick Vet is one of the leading veterinary colleges in the world now. And one of the things that's brought us to that status is that we're always looking at new and innovative ways to develop the teaching experience, particularly e-learning. Yeah, you can really hear the difference between them. You can just take that with you, you know, listen to it on the bus. It's been rightly described as the National Oral Library of Scotland. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. It's just a, a, a wealth of material about our past, but also importantly about contemporary Scotland. The study of folklore and folk life gets right to the heart of what it is to be a human being. And frankly, in our world today, that's a lesson that we all need to know. Nanotechnology is the making of tiny, tiny machines and people think it's going to have the same sort of impact as steam did in the Industrial Revolution. Universities are all about discovery and we're trying to boldly go where no one's been before. There are short-term applications, of course, in things like drug delivery systems, in polymers and paints, but really the most exciting things are the things that people haven't even dreamed of yet. Edinburgh has had, for at least a decade, an institute working on human stem cells, particularly human embryo stem cells. Well, the university has established a center for regenerative medicine. This is because there's a whole series of very unpleasant diseases in humans where various tissues or organs start to degenerate as people get older. The long-term aim is not just to produce tissues, but eventually to produce organs, such as kidneys or livers, that are capable of replacing organs that have gone wrong. In other words, eventually, you can prevent the need to have organ transplantation. What we've done in Edinburgh is we've set up a unique research centre, the Centre of Infectious Diseases, that cuts across traditional boundaries between human medicine and animal medicine. So we have medics, we have vets, we have biologists, we have mathematicians, all looking at uh, infectious disease problems. Sleeping sickness is a disease which affects rural communities across sub-Saharan Africa. It's transmitted from animals to man through the bite of an affected tsetse fly. The disease affects 300,000 people a year and the disease is fatal if people don't receive treatment. What we've been doing at Bush is we've developed a suite of molecular tools which have enabled us to identify these parasites in the animal host. And so for the first time, we can actually control the disease at source in the animal reservoir. Well, that means we can probably eradicate Rhodesian sleeping sickness from East Africa. This is Old College, home of the Law School of Edinburgh. You have been convicted of the heinous crime of murder. As a student, what do I feel about Edinburgh Law School? I am. <laughs> I so agree. But they're wrong. Law students are people too. We don't spend all of our time talking about can't. Ah! I wake up between the hours of 10 and 3. Young and sprightly. Off to university. Where I begin my studies in earnest. And now, duty done, I shall proceed to a nearby hostelry to meet with my friends. That's how we prepare ourselves for jobs. When I first came to uh, Edinburgh University, which was in the late 60s, the city certainly was quite forbidding in a way. Edinburgh was a very uh, prim city. Uh, of course, there was always another side to it, because this is the city of Jekyll and Hyde. Jenny Colgan, Keith from the Office, Mars Job, join the theatre company. Free movies, free films. There were all these clubs, and I remember joining lots of clubs when I first started. So I was in the film club, and I used to write reviews. And I was in the poetry society, which meant I would stand up in front of an audience and recite my own poems. Uh, talk curdlingly bad poems, but it was a great chance to actually meet people who had similar interests to me. My experiences at Edinburgh University were, were genuinely life-changing. I came down from the Orkney Islands where I'd grown up to study languages, 
but I came across art history almost by chance and it really opened my eyes to a whole new world. And here I am, having forged a career in fine art, now in contemporary art, running this museum down here in Australia. Well, to be honest, I wasn't a model student. I was capped at Scotland at 19 year old, so most of my university days were, were mixed with playing Six Nations and going on tours. The university's got a great reputation in sport, one of the best in, in the UK. It's no longer good enough to be training in the mud. We have to have the best facilities and I'm delighted to see the university taking that approach. I spent, oh, weeks and weeks, months in this top floor of the library, uh, catching up with studies because I'd had a very extracurricular couple of years, or well, three years really, doing student drama, student newspaper. So for me, it was that combination of work and, and very fruitful play. When I was in sixth year, I applied for a scholarship from the university and I was awarded the Trotman bursary. At the time, I was living at home with my parents and three younger brothers in a tiny flat, but being awarded the bursary gave me the chance to move into a student flat. It's been really great. It's given me the chance to concentrate on my studies and to enjoy student life. We want to be even stronger as one of the world's great comprehensive universities, and that means we need scholarships so the very best students around the world can come to us. We need professorships so that we can recruit the very best staff around the world, and we need absolutely top-rate buildings. Edinburgh is one of the great universities of Europe, and universities have to compete with Stanford, MIT, Harvard, and that means money. Edinburgh is so beautiful. I think it's a terrific place to spend four years of your life. Edinburgh looks back to its traditions and says we have strengths in these areas, but it's also looking forward. And you are in the middle of Edinburgh, which I love because it's a city the size of a town that you can think is a village. There are graduates of Edinburgh University in, in the farthest flung parts of the globe who look to this city and this university as their home. It's a very special place, a very remarkable city, and a very remarkable and wonderful university.